I want to give you a little, a little word before the big word. If you can find in the Bible where God did something for someone, then you have the right as his child to ask him to do the same thing for you. If you can find where God forgave a sinner, then you can ask God to forgive you by the blood of Jesus too. If you can find where God directed somebody in their path, you can pray a prayer for your business that God would direct you to. If you can find in the Bible where God healed somebody, their body, their mental health, where God cast an evil spirit out of somebody, you can pray over your family and your children and your mind and your body and ask God to do it for you. Whatever you ask in my name, I will do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. We wonder, you really mean that? What do you mean by whatever? I don't think it works like that. That's, our, that's the way we read this verse. What do you mean, whatever? What God, the Son, Jesus Christ, has done by ending this verse, by saying, this is all that the Father may be glorified, is to make prayer radically God-exalting and God-centered. And that's the flavor, the guardian around the word whatever, because you can all think of prayers that you could ask that won't glorify God if they get answered. I'll give you a few. God, please make me more important than you are. Please wipe the Jewish people off the planet, or black people, or white people. Choose your hatred, but support me in it, God. Because I hate these people, and I want them killed. Try that one. Or, God, please blind the IRS to all the times that I've lied on my tax returns. Or, God, please put my competitor out of business. And on and on and on, prayers that you can think of to stick in whatever. You know the biggest scripture that changed my life is the smallest scripture. It's in James 4 and 2. You have not because you ask not. Uh-oh, listen to me. I can't even tell you how big that is. Look at me. This is the coldest thing I'm going to tell you today. You have not because you ask not. It's that simple. Most people don't have the life of their dreams because you ain't never asked God could you have it. You've been trying to do it yourself. You've been trying to figure it out for yourself how that's been working out for you. Kind of crazy, ain't it? I just told you earlier, you can't figure it out. Ain't no scripture nowhere tell you to figure it out. What you trying to figure your life out for? It ain't yours. You ain't make it. You ain't the creator. You ain't got nothing to do with tomorrow. You can't change the past. So what you tripping with your life for? You have not cause you ask not. Y'all ain't never asked God, could you be rich? Most people ain't rich today because you ain't never asked God, could you be rich? I asked God every day when I was homeless. At the lowest point of my life, I asked God every day, could I be rich? You know why? Because I had had it up to him with being poor. I want you to take a moment and ask God right there in your seat or in your home or wherever you are. And I want you to realize the continuity of God's grace, that the pages of this scripture, although they're not still being written, the Bible calls you a living epistle. And maybe you think an epistle is like a wife of an apostle, but that's not what an epistle is. It is a letter that is written, and it's written by God's hand. And so I want you to understand that you are stepping into the story of God, even as you live out the story of your own life. And the fact that you're breathing today tells me he's not done with you yet. Every prayer you make should have the implicit meaning, hallowed be thy name. 
If you pray a prayer and do not implicitly mean, hallowed be your name, it's not a God-honoring prayer. Even if it's, please help me find a parking place. I'm okay with that. If you're on task with the mission to glorify God. Now you got another route you want to take, go ahead. See, the thing about having faith is, you don't need nobody's permission. You don't have to take out a loan. You don't have to get accepted into the course. You can start your faith today. You can start your walk with God today. You ain't got to clear it with nobody. There's plenty of openings. He's available. All you got to do is go. If you would only ask, well, Steve, what do I ask for? Everything. You want a relationship with God where God is not only your king, he's your companion, he's your guide, he's your friend. You know how you can tell your friend anything? That's the relationship he's looking for. You, you got to have that, man. Listen to me. When, when you ask God for something, it's a very simple thing. You know how I acquired a lot of stuff was because of the second scripture I'm going to tell you about. See, you have not because you ask not. You got to start asking God for big stuff. Stop wasting God's time with all this little stuff. Lord, help me make my rent. Don't he always? You keep coming up with your rent. Lord, help me make my rent. You keep coming up with it. Has it ever occurred to you that maybe you should ask God for a mortgage? I want us to take a moment and bow together before the Father. We call on his name today. We, we know him as a good father. And maybe today in your life you need to know him as a way maker. Then you can call on him to make a way. Now here's where you really need to listen to the voice of the Lord. You don't get to tell God how to do it. He may not do it the same way for you that he did it for others. But if he opened blind Bartimaeus' eyes, that means he can show you what you need to see in your life too. You didn't hear me. If he touched a leper then, that means he will touch you right now. God of Moses. God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Mary, God of David. We call on your name right now. We call on the name of Jesus. We call on you to meet every need. We call on you to fill every empty place. We call on you now to give hope to the hopeless. We call on you now to heal the broken. We call on you right now to stitch up the wounds and bind the brokenhearted. We call on you right now to provide and make a way where there seems to be no way. We call on red seas to part right now in your name. We call on sickness and disease to dry up and shrivel in Jesus' name. We call for illumination in the midst of confusion right now in Jesus' name. Come on, call on him in your own way. Call on him in your own way. Call on him in your own way. Call on him. Who is he to you?